All right, today we're taking a look at section 5.1 conceptually, and 5.1 is about uh, finding areas under the curve of a function. And uh, we're going to do that using finite sums, which means we're not, we're not quite, um, well, we're only going to have a finite amount, so it's going to be an approximation instead of an exact value. And then later on we'll learn how to find the exact value of the area under the curve. What this sub section is meant to do is to show you hypothetically and conceptually what is going on when we're, when we're finding areas under a curve. So here I have this graph f of x, and I'm curious about the points between a and b. I want to figure out what the area is under a and b. And so there's a few questions that we'll have about this. One is, um, are the rectangles that I'm going to estimate with, are they equal width? And we usually use equal width. So we're going to go ahead and call the width of each rectangle delta x. So a change in x. The next question will be, how many rectangles do I want to use? In this drawing, I've used four. And so how do we figure out what delta x is? Well, we're going to take b, the upper value, minus a, the lower value, and that gives us this area right here. And if we want 4, if we want 4, then we'll divide that by 4. But a general formula is going to be b minus a divided by n, where n is the number of rectangles that you want. So we wanted 4 rectangles, so we took b minus a to find this area and divided it evenly 4 times. And that's going to be our width of delta x. So of course, so let me write this down. The first question is, are the rectangles equal width? The next question is, how many rectangles to estimate? And um, then your third question might be, how do I figure out the height of each rectangle? So, height of each rectangle. And you'll notice here, what, what I did with this particular example, hopefully you can see it, is on the left point of the rectangle, right? So the left point for this rectangle is A. So I come up here and I find its height on f of x, and its height is f of a, right? Because if we plug in a to f of x, we'll get f of a. And then we allow that to be the height of the whole triangle. So in other words, we're leaving this rectangular, um, so we have to choose, do we want to pick the left endpoint, which is what we're doing here. We could pick the right endpoint as well, or we could even pick the midpoint. Um, but for this case, my height of my first rectangle is f of a. The height of my second rectangle is f of a plus delta x. Right? f of a plus delta x gets me there. And then so on and so forth. The next one's going to be f of a plus 2 delta x. So in other words, I'm going to my left point for x and figuring out my y output. And that's the height of the, of the rectangle. I pick my left endpoint, I plug it into my function f of x, and I find the height of the second rectangle. I plug in a plus 2 delta x, and I get my height of my third rectangle. And I plug in f of a plus 3 delta x to get the height of my fourth rectangle. And then, of course, if we wanted to find the area, so let me write this down. We can do a left endpoint. or right, or we can also do a, um, a central uh, point or a midpoint. But we'll talk about that more specifically in another problem. Uh, but for now, how are we going to add up the, uh, how are we going to sum the rectangles? Um, and so what we would do here is we would say, well, a rectangle um, a rectangle is going to have height times width, right? Height times width is going to be area. And in 
in this case, the height and width of our rectangles of the first rectangle is given by a times f of a. a times f of a, right, a is, or I'm sorry, um, delta x is the width of our first rectangle, delta x is the width, and the height is f of a. So delta x times f of a. Then we'll add the next rectangle, which also has width delta x, but it has a height f of a plus delta x, right? So the width of this one is still delta x, but the height is now f of a plus delta x. And then we'll add the last two rectangles, which is also delta x times the height, which is f of a plus 2 delta x, plus, once again, delta x is the width of our last rectangle, times f of a plus 3 delta x. And so now we have a finite sum of the area under the curve. It is going to be an underestimation, because as you can see, there are some areas that we are obviously not counting. So the true area under the curve is going to be larger than our estimation based on uh, where we picked. Um, so this is left end point, right end point is the same thing except instead of starting with f of a you would start with f of a plus x and this would give you your height of your first rectangle. Um, this would give you your height of your second rectangle. This would give you the height of the third rectangle and this would give you the height of the fourth rectangle. And you'll notice that with right endpoint for this specific graph, now we're actually going to overestimate because we can see there's some area that we're counting that's not truly under the graph f of x. Now it's very similar with the midpoint, but with the midpoint, we're going to go to the middle of each delta x. And those middles are going to find us our height of our rectangle. And of course, with a midpoint, we're now looking at, so like, for example, let's do a midpoint here. If we wanted to find the area using the midpoint method, it's still height times width. And in this case, the first one would have a width of delta x. And I hope you've proved to yourself now that I can factor delta x out, because every rectangle, because they're going to be uniform, all have equal width. So each height is going to be multiplied by delta x as a width. But the height of my first is going to be f of a plus delta x half, right? Because I'm going halfway between a and delta x. So this is um, a plus half of delta x, and I'm plugging that into my function to get my height. And... Uh, then, of course, I'm going to add the height of my next, my next rectangle, which is going to be delta x plus a half delta x. That's 3, 3 delta x half, 3 delta x half. So that's the height is f of a plus 3 halves of delta x. And then I'll add f of a plus 5 delta x half. Because if I'm looking here, I've got one half, two half, three half, four half, and five halves, and you'll see a pattern here. The next one's going to be f of a plus seven delta x half, and then we multiply through the delta x, and this will give us our midpoint um, estimation of the area under the curve. So these are a few ways uh, to work this out. Um, I believe in this section we're only going to be using flat topped. Uh, rectangles. Um, there are other methods where you can actually use um, kind of slanted topped um, rectangles. Well, I guess they wouldn't be rectangles then. But anyhow, I hope this helps. I'll come out with uh, some videos about specific problems, but for now, hopefully, this helps you understand how we are finding area under the graph. Thanks.